Hey, what up, YouTube? This is the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan, the Knicks fan. Let's get right into it. Hey, what up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan, the Knicks fan, and let's get right back into it. Well, everybody's making videos about this player, that player, who's going to be picked in the draft. And yeah, I made a few videos myself, but I just was thinking, is Obi Toppin the next Kenny Smith? I mean, why well, I say Kenny Smith? I always think of Charles Smith when I think of a bad player of the New York Knicks, but I actually mean to say the Kenny Skywalker. Well, anyway, I know the draft was coming up, the lottery was the other night, I, and it feel kind of funny because I'm not used to this. I was just thinking about the draft night, I was saying, I'm gonna be honest, I really, I really don't even watch the whole draft. I just watch it till the Knicks pick and then I'm out. You know what I'm saying? If we got two picks, I watch it even like last year. But um, it's gonna feel a little weird because I'm not gonna be used to waiting so long down the you know, path. But you know, the last time we waited this long, I think who we picked? It was Tim Hardaway. I think and Tim Hardaway was the number 24th pick. That's because we didn't even have an early first one. I think we got rid of our pick. No, that was our pick. I don't I, Actually, I forget the whole scenario, but I know that's the longest I have waited in a while. Usually the Knicks be up in the top. We was lucky to get in the top three last time and get R.J. Barrett, but we usually be nine, seven, eight. Got lucky with Paul Zingas at number four, Kevin Knox at number nine, Frank Neal Killer at eight, and Toppin at number eight. But um, like I said, let's get back into our, our original you're talking about. Our, I'm all into the draft right now, but I was talking about Obi Toppin, and during the preseason last game, I just thought about it, actually it just came back to me, you know what I'm saying, but um, the coach of um, the Detroit Pistons, he made a comment, he said that Obi Toppin reminded him of Kenny, um, Kenny Skywalker, Kenny Skywalker, and I thought to myself, is Obi Toppin the next Kenny Skywalker? I don't know, I don't know. The game is similar. The only thing, one thing different about Kenny and Obi is that Obi Toppin takes threes and Obi Toppin is not a bad mid-range jump shot shooter. So that's why I don't understand why Tibbs didn't really have him running plays where he could come even though I don't know, he had to get acclimated into that kind of, with, with Randall. That's the problem. Randall was taking a lot of minutes and a lot of positions away from Obi Toppin. But Obi Toppin is a better mid-range shooter than um, Skywalker was. But um, they do play alike, and they they remind me of one another. But um, Mr. Walker, Skywalker, he was asked, and he was told the same thing. He was he told like, you know, yo, you remind me of Obi Toppin, and he responded, you know, about, I mean, he responded what? No, I don't mean to change it, but I'm trying to think. What year did we drafted um Kenny Walker? What year? 1986, woo, 1986. But he was asked about him and to Obi Toppin, and he had a few words to say. He was basically saying, well, him and, him and Obi Toppin's situation is kind of different, but he was basically saying that Obi needs to slow down, concentrate a little more, and this off season to work on more on his jump shot. You know, so I understand him saying work on his jump shot, but Obi Toppin can work on the jump shot more to get confidence and everything. But you know, say Obi Top Obi Toppin do have a nice mid-range jumper. I don't know why he really didn't display that this much this season. I guess the way the game was flowing. But um, yeah, as you said, that Obi Toppin needs to you know slow down. But as I was thinking too, like when Kip, when um, excuse me, when Coach Casey made that comment, I was thinking like, do he know something we don't know? Because they did have the number seven draft pick and they chose Killian Hayes over Obi Toppin. But at the same time, I'm still excited about Obi Toppin, but that's why I'm making this video. Like, is Obi Toppin the next um, Kenny Skywalker? Because, it, yo, I don't want to talk about Kwame Brown, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I always like Kwame Brown as a player. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, when Steven Smith used to come out there and talk about that bullshit, he was a bust. I was like, how, he's a bust. You know what I'm saying? And now that he's making videos, I like, I be having conversations with people and I'm like, I agree with this dude on certain situations. Not search with a lot of situations. Damn it, everything he said, you know what I'm saying? But um, 
I don't want to call Kenny, Kenny Walker a bust, but when he came into the league, he had a lot of expectation on him. You know what I'm saying? I think he was drafted number five in 86. And um, when he came into, when, when the Knicks drafted him, he was supposed to be a replacement for Bernard King. <laughs> you heard me. He was supposed to be the replacement for Bernard King. But the thing about it was, it was so much pressure. You know how New York is. Every day after a game, you had all the media, they sticking microphones in your face and asking you this question. And then, I don't know, I, to, in my opinion, I don't care. A lot of people might like him, but he was one of the worst Knicks coach. I don't know, I just didn't like him. You know, I just didn't like him. That was Rick Pitino. Um, to have a coach like that, you know what I'm saying, who just thought about me, me, me first, because if you really want to think about it, that, that dude, when he came from out of college and got him to, he was begging him to get a goddamn NBA coaching job. And when he finally got that job, it was really more about him and pushing his agenda. And it, it, let's get back to Obi Toppin and, and my man, Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith, Kenny, Kenny Skywalker. So I like, as he was speaking, he was talking about his only regrets is that Kenny Skywalker, that is, that he didn't work more on his jump shot, that part of his game. And he think that could have helped him, you know, especially taking the pressure, because most of his, his, his game was put backs and cut dunks and, you know, stuff like that off a of fast break, break. His highlight came in what, the 1989 slam dunk contest. So, you know, I don't know. I, I got to still keep asking myself, is he the next... Obi Toppin, that is, is he the next um, Kenny Skywalker? And Skywalker himself, after comparing, well, some of you scout told him and compared him to Obi Toppin, he compared Obi Toppin to Larry Nance Jr. And I started thinking about that too. You know what I'm saying? Like Larry Nance, Larry Nance Jr., he's having some spectacular dunks, but he only have moments. So is Obi Toppin just a moment player? Every now and then get a dunk or whatever, ride a crowd? I don't know. I don't know, but what I do know is that I did, I mean, I did like the pick, you know, especially after watching um, tape or whatever you want to call it, videos of Obi Toppin. I don't know, I just think um, Coach Tibbs got to find a way to get Obi Toppin more involved in the game, you know what I'm saying, run some plays for him. But what, if I'm Obi Toppin this summer, I'm going and working on my threes. I mean, he's going to have a chance to really work on his game. So when he comes back next season, he's going to be, I hope he don't get hurt. He should be a little more because the summer league is coming up. So he's going to be busy throughout the summer. But I will be working on my threes and working on my mid-range shot. Because once he work on that mid-range shot and he get it to where he can hit you, hit him, and players got to respect it, he can always hit them with that jab step. We already know he got the athleticism to go and just bang it. So I don't know. But like I said, I'm going to ask this question one more time. Is Obi Toppin the next Kenny Skywalker?